You guys, Joshua Peters from Peterson Electric. Try to do one good video for you guys a week um, for you residential service electricians. This will be good for you. It is April 2020 COVID. We're five weeks into it. So um, if you see my mask, you'll know. You'll remember this video. Uh, complaint was lights flickering, home 2012, eight years old. Uh, arc fault breakers, you can see were very minimal, especially in Johnstown. They don't seem to keep up on arc faults, especially this area. But nowadays, in around a 2012 home, I would probably have about that many arc faults um, because they required a little bit more. Um, so anyways, just want to help you guys out. Uh, the complaint was, hey, Josh, my lights are flickering in my bathrooms that are separated. Um, didn't really say ceiling fans in the master bedroom. Uh, because of this being arc faulted separate, the master bath and the bath second next to it was flickering. I'm not going to go in the home and show you all that because you know what a typical 2,000 square foot home looks like. Um, so basically the concern was is, you know, the power company Excel came out yesterday, said everything on their side was good. I've heard that in the past, not necessarily right. I showed up here. First thing I did was open this up. And I wiggled on these, and the power is off right now, just so you know, because um, a lot of you guys give me criticism on that. But right here, the power, you can see this as I was moving it. This was loose. I had three and a half revolutions to tighten it. The deox isn't old. Okay, so I was looking for that. And then I looked for uh, a, a concern because the microwave had an issue. The fridge had an issue. Um, so it was like every other one, which was the B phase. As you can see, this electrician was dyslexic and should have done black to red. It really doesn't matter but you should just keep it uniform, black, white, red, okay? But anyway, so I looked at that, looked at the voltage. We couldn't quite get it to reciprocate, but as soon as I tightened all this up, and I did have a couple loose things in here on the neutrals, definitely workmanship, guess what? I took off the light, put on my own little light bulb, and it flickered with my light bulb in my socket and my light off the truck, and I'm like, okay, we got another issue. Turned everything on in the home, including the range, and it corrected it. So that told me probably one of the legs. So I went back out here. And guess what I found? It didn't even have a nut on it. The line side of this square D home line disconnect. This breaker, no nut. And so this was starting to pit. I just sanded it down. It was black. So I did have a little bit of pitting, a little bit of heat. Am I concerned about that? No, because I still have about 70% of that body right here that will touch in right there. And so I think it's better to sand that guy down and put it in and it hit it right here. And so this came apart. So I had to, you know, pull the tag, pull the meter. You make sure your bypass lever is down. And this is not for homeowners, okay? This video, I know you DYIs like to watch me. Do not call me on this. You shouldn't be touching any of this. If you don't know what you're doing, if you never put it together and you've never touched this, don't experiment. Because if you get that bypass lever in the wrong position and you think it's off, you will be, you'll be in trouble. You're going to hurt yourself. So anyway, so I took this apart. Everything will clean in here. Definitely was just this. Okay, so when you put this in, you electricians, you're going to definitely be careful putting this back in. But that's going to click right in. And I don't like these as much as I like the Siemens, that's for sure. I'm definitely a Siemens guy, okay? That'll pop right back in. But once I sanded it, the power is off. We need to put that lug back in. Now, I did double check the plastic. I had a little bit of heat here, but not bad. The thread is still good. I can still re-thread it to get it in. Trickiest part is getting all that to just line up because it slides right in there. Now, there are times I've gone to the house and that is completely melted. And if that plastic is warped and melted and it looks like wax, you got to change your disconnect, okay? So we caught it in time, and it's a 2008. Now, the customer said, how come the last, the last uh, customer didn't ever do that? Well, it takes time for that to actually start to flicker. And you don't know if it's a connection over here or if it's going to be part of that URD to a connection. See that electrical green box? That's their connection right there. So we didn't have snow yesterday. It was 75 degrees. As you can see today, it's about 15 degrees and a foot of snow. Um, basically, we know that, you know, the Excel guy probably checked both sides and said he was good. When I came in here, I twisted this one three and a half revolutions as well. And you can see it's black and white red like it should be. They just swapped it over there, but whatever. It doesn't really matter to me. But 
the point of the matter is, is the, the voltage started to change from here to here. And so I looked inside of here and I had no nut in there. So as I put this back together, that locks back in. And now we can actually put that nut on. So this is the second time I've been out to anywhere from Thompson Valley Ranch or to the Johnstown area and even one in Loveland. Um, I have seen this nut missing. I don't know if the electrician dropped it on a Friday. I don't know if he was smoking a lot of weed that day, but I don't know how you can miss these nuts. They come with the breaker. And if you're missing one, then you need to go back to your wholesale company and get that corrected. But if you miss that nut on there, you can fry all their appliances because when you affect, well, if you affected the neutral, it would have fried all their appliances. It would have been a quicker find years ago for someone. But what's going to happen is your insurance is going to be trying to investigate why you keep frying your appliances and your neighbor did not. Um, so again, it's good to keep relationship to at least one or two neighbors because if power starts to go out, you can understand what's going on with your neighbor just by knocking on the door and as you can see this guy's power is right here and guess what his pedestal is right there so they're both going to share off the same power so he said at 2 a.m his power went out maybe his neighbor was not up but maybe he had to reset his clocks in the morning these bypass levers do not help you if power goes out that just basically means your power is still going to go out that's really just for the protection of the utility guys but as we come in here and tighten all this up. Some of you guys have said to me, well, you shouldn't sand that down. You should just replace the disconnect. Well, I disagree with you. I think there's a melting point that we all are fairly familiar with if you've been in the trade long enough. In the last 22 years of my diagnostic, if that plastic melts, you're at about 200 degrees Fahrenheit, maybe even about three. So at that point, yes, maybe you can just get the guts and take out these four, five, 16 nuts and pull it out because it's only eight years old. I bet you that would have been a good way to do it too. But the bottom line is that has still got a lot of life on it. So it's better to sand it down with the bristle brush. Again, if you've never done this before and you're not an electrician or you're an electrician that's an apprentice, maybe you shouldn't touch this until you know what you're doing on it. Um, but yeah, so we're all good to go here. And I'll get that pop back on and, and check everything, but we shouldn't have any flickering after that. Anyways, guys, thanks for joining us. Let us know your comments. Have a good one.